Hi guys, GH here and welcome back to another Tree of Savior video. Today, we're going to check out the Warlock, Featherfoot, and Terramancer. This is gonna be somewhat an update video to the early 2019 Featherfoot Warlock Shadowmancer video that I made. I removed Shadowmancer because it's just bad at the moment. So I replaced it with a class that can hit really hard and it's Terramancer. Could have been Elementalist or something else. Anyway, what we're gonna do is show each classes, tell you guys why each of those classes are here in this build, check out their important skills, give closing remarks, and the good and the bad. And with that said, here is Warlock, Featherfoot, and Terramancer. Let's do this. Okay, here's the build. We got the Vampire class, Featherfoot, the Evil Spirit Summoner, Warlock, and Terramancer, the Earthbender. Let's start with Featherfoot. Now, Featherfoot is a class that specializes on debuffs and blood absorption skills and attacks. And the reason that this class is here is because it gives the build the ability to self-sustain, meaning you can heal yourself using Featherfoot skills and you can also heal your teammates, not directly. And Featherfoot can also give you a decent damage boost with the use of its skills, which is Poison Attribute, and Poison Attribute is strong against Fire, Ice, Lightning, and Earth. First skill in the Featherfoot arsenal is called Bone Pointing. This is a summon that attacks nearby enemy and debuffs them with Hexing or Curse Debuff. This is important because this is how you're gonna be able to absorb HP regardless of what monster type you're attacking. Bone pointing isn't exactly the skill that absorbs HP, you have to use the next skills. Blood bath and blood sucking. Now blood bath is a damage over time skill that makes enemies bleed. If the target is a beast, insect, or devil type. Or if they're inflicted with hexing or cursed debuff which bone pointing can deliver bone pointing can hex enemies can curse them so if you're using bone pointing first and inflicting hexing you will be able to absorb hp even if the target is not a beast insect or devil type just a reminder be close to the enemy because the bleeding animation is the one that heals you now same goes to blood sucking the only difference is Blood sucking is a channeled skill, so you need to hold down the button to continue absorbing HP. This is a much better way to recover HP. There's another way to recover HP and it's by using Blood Curse. It's a skill that can deal damage and inflict Curse by Blood debuff. And if an enemy has Curse by Blood debuff, you will be able to recover HP while dealing damage, both basic attacks or skills. And your teammates can also recover HP too. So that's another way of indirectly healing teammates. And I almost forgot, you cannot use Blood Curse if you're not levitating. Which can be done by using a Featherfoot skill called Levitation. And Levitation is a skill that can make you fly. And also with the proper attribute, it increases Featherfoot skills by 30%. So get that attribute. Last skill we're gonna cover is Enervation. This is a debuff that gives additional damage when enemies are hit. And that's Featherfoot, a very viable class to pick in terms of its overall class capability. Now let's head on to Warlock. This used to be the partner in crime of Featherfoot, but they kinda lowered the skill factor of the offensive Featherfoot skill that took advantage of Warlock debuffs. This skill is called Kundela Slash. It's still somewhat usable but not as good as before. Now let's go back to Warlock. Now Warlock is a class that revolves around summoning spirits and using them to attack. The reason it's here is because when I reconfigured this build, I thought the Warlock Featherfoot combo is still very good but now they ain't really needed to be together anymore. They still kinda of benefit from each other but not as much as before. So anyway, let's look at the Warlock skills. First off is Invocation. This is a buff that allows a Warlock to summon spirits automatically for a minute. And you can only summon a maximum of 10 spirits. 
and those spirits summoned can be ordered to attack nearby enemies with the use of a skill called Evil Sacrifice. There's nothing much to say about this. When you use Evil Sacrifice, your spirits will go kamikaze. The next skill is called Dark Turge. This is a skill that summons 5 spirits to rotate around you. This is separate from the spirits that randomly pop out, but you can also command it to attack. The next skill is Ghastly Trail. This makes all spirits follow you, but aside that, it gives a buff that increases spirit damage by 100% for 6 seconds. So using this right after making an attack command is essential. The next skill is Pole of Agony. This is an area attack that deals damage and it has an art that can make Pole of Agony summon spirits while it's active. And if you're wondering, does it work with Pole of Agony scroll? The answer is yes. You can use two Pole of Agony at the same time. Look at this. Okay, the last skill we're gonna cover for Warlock is Mastema. Now, this is an area attack that deals moderate damage and it inflicts stigma debuff that deals damage over time. And also, any enemy with a stigma debuff gets automatically attacked by spirits. So, this is a skill worth using right after summoning spirits. And that's Warlock recently changed to be more focused on summoning spirits. And now let's head on to the last class, Terramancer. Now, Terramancer is a class that manipulates the earth element to attack enemies. And the reason it's here is because Terramancer can deal a decent amount of damage for the build. And before we start with the skills, let's mention the Sandy Dust debuff first. This is an attribute by the way, so take it. And yeah, all Terramancer skills inflict Sandy Dust debuff. And what it does is all Terramancer skills gets additional 20% damage and additional crit rate when targets are inflicted with Sandy debuff. Now let's check out the first skill called Implosion. This is a single target earth type attack that gets increased crit rate when targets are already inflicted with Sandy Dust debuff. Next skill is called Stone Shower. And as the name suggests, it's a skill that makes a stone shower that does multiple hits. This is another very good skill. Use this when you can. Third skill that we have is called Rolling Stone. And as the name suggests, it's a skill that rolls a stone that inflicts greater damage if the Rolling Stone hits the enemy target right after the channeling ends. Last skill we're gonna cover for Terramancer is Horn of Golem. This is a charging golem attack that inflicts great damage on an enemy. And it has an art that changes how it works. And instead of the golem charging forward, it will instead drop down from the sky and rotate around and deal damage. And summon a bunch of sand that inflicts sandy debuff. And that's Terramancer, an awesome class to pick if you want more damage. Now that we got the classes out of the way, let's do the good and the bad. Let's start with the bad. I will say to you right now that this is not good for single target compared to the other classes. And lastly, this build doesn't have any reliable iframe, so that's a bad. Now let's do the good stuff. First is, this is good for mobbing. You have a lot of skills to use when dealing with multiple targets. Another thing is the build's amazing self-sustain. It means you can heal easily and also your teammates. Lastly, this is a very good class build to use endgame because having the ability to heal yourself and deliver consistent damage while doing it is definitely a trait some of the other builds they wish they have. All in all, damage-wise, it's average. And in terms of survivability, self-sustain, and mobbing, this is an excellent class build to play around with. It's certainly very viable. 
And that's the class build guys, what do you think? Is the build worth playing around with or is it another pass? Share your thoughts in the comment section down below and if you like the video, hit the like button, share and then subscribe to be part of the Gaming Hardcore family. And as always, this is Gaming Hardcore. See you in the next one.